Tony Sheeter, he's the head of the utility board. Uh, he's mentioned that uh, the city will not enter into an agreement unless it fiscally makes sense, financially makes sense for the city, and is environmentally safe for the residents. Uh, have you all given the, the city and uh, the, the utility board and the city council, have you given them uh, the information that you've all been, been uh, sharing with us here in the media? Well, do they have, do they, have cer they certainly came here to try and do it. One of the <laughs> things that we're trying to get is meetings with these people to explain the situation to them. And par part of the problem is that th there is no real experience with using this canvas grass at this scale for combustion to generate electricity. So I've been working a lot with the air group at EPA because we brought some new data to them, which actually started a lot of the assessment of biomass about a year and a half ago. And they came back with saying, we don't have any data that we can give you to compare. And the Europeans, again, have more experience growing this canvas grass. But they use it for biofuel conversion, which is an entirely different kind of chemical process mm -hmm. than what we're talking about here with burning the grass. So the, right now, I think the issue is making sure that everybody in the community, especially the people at the utility board and the mayor and everyone, are aware of what the health consequences are. I mean, people assume, quite understandably, that the permitting process is going to be protective of human health. The difficulty, again, is that if you go and look at the publications about particulates, I'm just going to stick with particulates for the moment, that there are literally four or 5,000 articles in the last three or four years about the effects of particulates. Particulates affect every bioregulatory system in the body. And it is truly scary. Now, people can say, well, we're exposed to particulates. We drive cars. They generate mm -hmm. it. Diesel trucks generate a lot of particulates. But the point is, we're already at a level which probably is dangerous. Picking a power source, biomass instead of natural gas, where we know we're going to get 10 times more particulates, why increase the risk? when there is no safe threshold. The American Lung Association, the American Heart Association, the American Cancer Society have all come out in the last year and a half and said there is no safe threshold of exposure. So we can't set a level for particulates and said this is okay. And actually, as you get incremental increases, that's what the risk is. So that you find out that there's significant associations with cancer, 22 different kinds of cancer, especially for males, prostate cancer. There's significant cardiorespiratory risk for everybody, especially kids. There was a huge study done in California, it's called the California Child Health Study, where they looked at, and I think this is a very graphic example of what goes on in terms of current, current exposure and why we can't increase the exposure. They took high school athletes. Kids are obviously in good shape, mm -hmm. very competitive situation. Basically, they took 4,000 kids and they divided them into groups. And the two groups were kids who did only indoor sports, so they weren't being exposed to a lot of higher particular levels in terms of athletic competition, and the other half were kids who played all outdoor sports. And then they looked at this, I think, about five years later. <clears throat> the incidence of new cases of asthma, this wasn't just kids who were sicker because they already had asthma, but new cases of asthma, meaning cause of disease, that's a huge, huge issue. The kids who played outdoor sports, 300% higher cases of new asthma incidents. It goes on and on and on. One of the things that's been a big issue, most of my career has been in intensive care, but recently I've been doing a lot of work in the behavioral and developmental area. <clears throat> there's no question now that there's increasing evidence that exposure to higher levels of particulates only does things like induce premature labor, so we get premature infants and we know have more health problems and more developmental risk. But now there's significant evidence, I don't think it's quite to the point where I'd say it's absolutely convincing, but it's worth considering that a lot of things that we're seeing, for instance, the higher level of incidence of so-called ADD or ADHD may in fact be relatively linked to kids being exposed to higher levels of particulates. And one of the things that's a big question right now in terms of the developmental field is that you know, when I started practicing 40 years ago, the number of kids you would see with autism were very, very few. Now, listening to the radio coming over from Louisville today, there are repeated ads on the radio from autism groups in which the incidence now is 1 in 110. Well, 
one of the things that's becoming a big concern at the moment is we don't know why this sudden increase in the number of kids with autism, but there have been a number of articles published recently saying perhaps the link is particulates. So that's still an open question, but the amount of exposure we have right now does cause risk. The American Lung Association has come out and said the current levels of exposure cause probably tens of thousands of deaths a year. Why increase it when you've got a power source available in natural gas, which will not cause the same kind of emission spectrum problems that you're going to get from burning grass? Thank you. Okay. Very well put.